What's up everybody? Welcome back to Make It Custom. Today we're going to be on the English wheel making a patch panel for this van. You may have seen the van before in a couple other videos, but the people I sold it to are asking me to do a little bit of metal work repairing the rust on the side. And I know a couple of you guys wanted to see that anyways. This video in particular, I'm just going to be showing you kind of a more detailed look at how to properly use the English wheel to roll a curve. And I'm not just talking about one curve of one radius. There's a couple different radiuses that are gonna have to go into this panel. This is the side of the van and the beginning of the rear wheel lip. So this part of the van is what's rusted out. I'm gonna show you here. Obviously, <laughs> this is what we're trying to replace. There's tons of Bondo in here. Somebody's patched it up before. So I, I went and cut this off another van because it's got the wheel lip here, the wheel well lip. And uh, we're gonna use this as our template, obviously, because this has been messed with. This is not an accurate representation of the panel. This is a more accurate representation of the panel, but there are more than one radius involved in making this. So we've got a slow radius here and a little bit more of a radius there. It's gonna involve more than one wheel. And the way that I like to do this is I like to use the English wheel with this rubber band. This rubber band came from Trick Tools. They've got a couple of different sizes. The idea of the rubber band is that you can basically push whatever radius your lower anvil is into the rubber band and it'll form it. What I like to do first is I like to use a uh, profile gauge like this one. This one's uh, made by Empire. I'm sure that a bunch of different companies sell them. So I'm gonna press that gauge on the side of the panel. Okay, so that there gives us an accurate representation of the panel that we need to make. Now there are a slower radius here and then it, it's a little bit more of a radius there. So I'm gonna choose the correct wheel. See this, that's got too much radius for that spot. But as we go down, it's the correct radius for here. So this wheel is what we're gonna use for the lower section of our panel. And then this wheel is what we're gonna use for the upper section. Now it does flatten off almost to flat, but not quite flat. I think this is my shallowest radius. So these two wheels are what we're gonna use to make this panel. There's gonna be a couple of brakes involved as well. So I'm gonna measure out the size that we need. With a panel like this, you wanna get, you know, all the rust out and then stop it before we get into anything that doesn't need to be replaced. So feeling up inside here, there is the floor of the van runs about there. This reverse curve doesn't need to be replaced. You know, the rust comes to about here. So I just wanna go a little bit above that and going near a body line is also kind of strong. I'm probably gonna make my panel about 10 inches. And if we have to cut a little off, that's okay. So I'm gonna cut a 10 inch piece, 48 inches wide. We're also gonna have to break a small lip on this side. Let's go over to the break. We'll cut a piece out. Okay, I'm just gonna measure out the brakes that we're gonna put in here. I'm gonna call that three quarters of an inch. And then another one is gonna be about, about half an inch. So what we're gonna do is make these couple of breaks in here. This one is a very shallow break, but there is a little bit of a break in there. And then we've got almost a 90 degree break here. And then there's a tiny tip right on the bottom lip of this thing. Now, I don't think I'm gonna do that with the brake, or should I? Maybe I should rethink my strategy here so that I can do that with the brake. Sometimes it's really tough to do something super small, but I guess I could always grind it off afterwards. So I am gonna maybe give myself a little bit more room for that. What I'm doing right now is I'm just uh, 
I'm remarking it a little bit deeper so that I can give myself a bit of extra meat so that I can break this extra tiny little lip. It's gonna be a little bit bigger lip than what the factory is, but I can just always grind it off after. It's just way easier to do a four foot long break in something with the break rather than what I was originally thinking about tipping it over by hand. That's why I'm remarking it and omitting these marks on this side. Okay, got my marks lined up. Should probably also mention, I am doing this with 16 gauge. The reason being is that there is zero way to get to the back side of this to uh, hammer and dolly, which uh, makes it quite difficult to keep something super straight. So when I'm doing a totally flat, no crown panel, if I can use a little bit thicker material, like on this van, I am. So I'm gonna use 16 gauge here. Wow, it doesn't wanna do the tiny break. It broke it nice on the edges here, but um, it's not quite 90 in the center. It's having a little bit of trouble with that thick of material trying to do something that small. So um, I'm just gonna try and tune it up a little bit with the hammer. That is probably good enough. Okay, so far we're doing good. Sometimes it can be a bit tricky to get these. Okay, let's see how we're doing here. Okay, I think we actually kind of nailed it. It could go a little bit more on that bend. So I'm gonna clamp it in there one more time. But that is looking pretty good. I'm actually super happy with the way that's turning out. Let's just give it a little bump. Perfect. Okay, now we can start our rolls. So what I'd like to do is I'm gonna mark out some lines for the different radiuses that we're gonna run. That way I know, you know, that I'm not putting too much curve on this side of the panel and not enough on the other side. So I'm gonna grab our dies. Okay, so this is the wheel that we're gonna use for the bottom section. So pretty much the width of the wheel or a little less is what that radius is gonna run. You can see it starts to pull away right there. So the width of the anvil minus about a half an inch. So I'm gonna say about there. Looks like about there. And that's right when our next radius starts, which looks like about the, pretty much the whole width of this anvil. We know that we can press relatively hard into this material and uh, against both these anvils and we'll be able to get that shape in the rows that we've marked off. Now the rest of it has a much lesser radius. And so what we can do there is just use light tension and roll it through lightly and just keep checking it because we don't have an exact anvil to just press hard into there and know that we're not gonna go too far. We're gonna get onto the wheel. We're gonna put this lower anvil on. We're gonna start our roll and we're just gonna keep checking the profile with our gauge as we're going. The other thing you gotta make sure that you're doing is just keeping it super straight and you do wanna run right off the edge of the panel when you're using a forming 
type uh, scenario with your English wheel, you wanna go right off the edge of the panel because the edge also has to get that form in it as well. I mean, you might be able to go back and forth a few times and then just run it off the edge a little bit here and there to complete that profile into the panel. So Christina's probably gonna have to help me because it's a bit of a long panel here, but uh, we'll have to see how it goes if I can handle the four foot long panel. So I've got some very thin double-sided tape here that I'm gonna give it a shot. This likes to walk around a little bit and because we're gonna be using it a lot today, I'm just gonna go ahead and give this a try. I don't know if it's gonna work, I've never done it before, but this is super thin double-sided tape. Maybe it'll help us keep our rubber from walking around. We are getting a bit of a roll in it. I gotta come back to the side where I was holding and get it up to speed. Now the problem with breaking the edge, this edge, the problem with that is that uh, it's not allowing us to get right in to the die with it. So I'm gonna show you a little trick with the English wheel that if you need to get up close to an edge and the radius of the wheel does not allow that, what you can actually do, and uh, maybe this is common knowledge, but I didn't know this for quite a while, <laughs> so I'm gonna tell you guys about it, is you can shim up the side of your wheel a little bit, like that. And then you'll see, if you look in from this way, that uh, the contact patch moves from the center closer to the outside. So if I, you know, if the contact patch is normally there, if I can tip the wheel, it'll be closer to the edge. So that'll help us get closer to the edge that we broke. So what I'm gonna do is just make a little shim for that out of some sheet metal and just jam it in there. And then we'll roll it through a couple more times. Now we've got our wheel shimmed up on an angle there. We'll be able to get a little closer to the edge of our panel. Okay, we got a little bit of curve in it. Now I'd just like to check it with our radius gauge here. So we still have a bit to go. Right now the problem I'm having is that I've got a little bit of a flat spot right here. It's not much. You know, the rest, the radius that we did put in is, is looking really good. There's a tiny flat spot here that I was hoping to be able to tip the wheel over enough to get that out, but it looks like it's not coming willingly. So what I might have to do is just put this in the brake and let the fingers touch there and just barely kind of ease it. Maybe you have the fingers touch there, ease it up, ease it up, ease it up, and try and get a little bit of a roll there um, just so that we can continue on with our profiling here. I think I probably should have done this brake afterwards. I was worried about getting it close to the die. I can only go so far with my die tip to get close to the edge because it's running out of room in the actual die holder, that lower anvil holder there. You know, usually the brake makes a pretty hard line, which is not what we want. So I'm gonna loosen up the hold on it. And I'm just barely, just barely. And I'm gonna do it in a few places just to see if I can ease a little bit of a roll. Just a little. Well, golly, looks like we did it. Just three different spots there with the brake to try and get that roll going. Now we can continue on with our other anvil, our second run in the English wheel. 
I was sweating there for a minute. <laughs> okay, I'll take these little spacers out. Most importantly, we are staying as straight as we can. These lines are helping me see how straight I'm tracking the wheel. Okay, let's see how we're doing. Okay, our profile is looking very, very good. We've just got that little super slow curve from about there and onward to deal with. Now that's gonna just take super light pressure on the least amount of radius die. I just wanna start off really slow. It's like, it's like if you're wheeling for crown, you just wanna take it nice and easy so you don't go too far with it. Just a little bit at a time, moving over, slow increments. Oop, right when I said slow increments. And jumped a half an inch. Flip it around, catch this side up to speed. All right, let's have a look at our radius again. See how we're doing. Man, we're, we're so close. We're just about there. You can see the, these little fingers are just, just maybe half of the panel width overlapping there. So we're going to do it a few more times across the whole panel. And I think we're basically done. All right. We got to be just about there. That's it. We are there. Have a look at that. There's our panel and uh, I'm pretty happy with how it came out. There are no, you know, track marks that you can feel in it because we took our time. We did multiple passes, nice and light. This last little bit where we had to be very careful how shallow of a profile that is, it turned out awesome. I'm really happy with this panel. It was a little bit of a struggle in the beginning down here, but uh, I'm, I'm happy with the way that we did it. The only thing maybe I'll do differently next time is I'll still do these two sharp breaks first and then this shallow break because it was a little bit difficult to get it into the wheel, I would do that one after. I think that we could have still broke it after and, uh, and it would have been fine. But uh, I'm overall very happy with this panel. It's 16 gauge, like I said. So I'm going to uh, be able to weld it in a little bit more confidently without it warping a bit. Some people might think that's the wrong way to do it by going with a little bit thicker metal, but I know a lot of guys, uh, including myself, that love using 16 gauge where we can, just so that it can take the heat a little bit better. So that is the uh, tutorial on the English wheel with the uh, rubber band. Like I said before, that rubber band came from Trick Tools. I've heard of other guys using uh, inner tubes from like semi-truck tires. You can use the same thing. I did have a little bit of a trouble it walking off my wheel, but I found in the tape bin some very thin double-sided tape works really well for keeping that rubber band on my wheel. So this will be it for part one of rust repair on the van. Now let's actually just have a quick look at it here. Because we had the profile gauge, I know it's gonna fit awesome, but there's all this junk on here. But there it is, that's our, that's our panel that we're replacing. The profile matches really, really good. So I'm gonna start cutting this all out getting ready to do part two of this video. So thanks everybody for watching Make It Custom. Don't forget to like, click subscribe, hit notifications, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks a lot, everybody. Bye-bye.